Wherever you are in the world, welcome to another edition of Jerry's Take on China. Today, I'm going to discuss the investment environment in Guangdong and why it's so important to attract overseas Chinese to invest here. I hate asking, but it is a fact that pro-China stuff on these platforms doesn't get much traction. So please share this with your friends if you approve of the messages that I'm sending out. I'd really appreciate that. There's a meeting at this time of year, every year, which will be very important, very useful for the region where I live, Guangdong, and in particular, the Greater Bay Area. The meeting is the 2023 Overseas Chinese Entrepreneurs Guangdong Investment Conference. A mouthful, but there are a couple of reasons why this is important. One is that this doesn't just aim to attract foreign investment. This conference aims to attract investment from overseas Chinese people and all over the world, there are Chinese people. Culturally, they don't forget their roots. I've had a couple of followers in my Twitter and YouTube account who thank me for enlightening them on their hometown and who hope one day to visit, many of them for the first time. Probably the most important reason that Guangdong attracts foreign investment into the region, and although I don't want to go into an infomercial here, but it's because the region really does look like a great place to invest. It has massive infrastructure. The ports have intermodal connections and products from Australia, for example, can be offloaded and transshipped anywhere in China within a few days. China has the second largest network of trains in the world, but is by quite a long way the busiest country for rail travel and freight. I've actually visited the fully automated port of Nansha, which is part of Guangzhou, and I was amazed by how fast a ship can be unloaded. That port, which is only one of many in the GBA, can unload and move 24 million containers a year. Going inland and across the continents, Chinese goods can leave Guangdong today and be offloaded in Poland or at any one of 66 locations between here and there within the next 16 days. If goods are imported for regional use, there are over 11,000 kilometers of highway in the province. They link with the rest of China, where there's a total of 170,000 kilometers now existing. Remember that in the 1980s, there were no freeways at all in China. So if logistics are a concern, then Guangdong's already figured out the answer to the problem. Where there's a river, they build a bridge. Where there's a sea crossing, they couple the bridge with an elevated highway through an artificial island and into a tunnel. Where road builders see problems, engineers here find solutions. People wonder if investing in China is safe. They've all seen the headlines, they've heard politicians talking about problems, but those problems aren't real. What's real is what's here. And for example, Volkswagen in Foshan, about an hour's drive from my home, has the ability to build 66 complete vehicles in an hour. And interestingly, from the same report, I can read that there are two towns in Foshan City with a GDP of 100 billion RMB. That's 15 billion US dollars. I'm not sure there are many towns in the world with that kind of turnover, but the city of Foshan has two. It seems what journalists and politicians without experience in economics, without proper training, or even visits to China, what they haven't realized is that the people who know really do know. Direct foreign investment into China has grown year on year. In US dollars, the inflow went up by 10% this year to over $19 billion. Another important reason for investing in Guangdong is the proximity to markets. The world's most populous countries are very nearby. China isn't a member of ASEAN, but it is a dialogue partner. The organization was set up in a different era to keep communism out of regional trade, and it has a non-nuclear treaty, so it's unlikely that China can ever join this group. But it is the largest trading partner for the 10 countries and approximately 6 168 million people who make up ASEAN. Many of them use Chinese as their native language, and so much so that Chinese is one of the official languages of the organization. So China's a fitting place for overseas Chinese who want to invest. 
The Belt and Road Initiative, or BRI, has taken the world by storm. It includes 138 countries, but more importantly, according to the World Bank, more than a third of the world's trade and as much as 60% of the global population. And the BRI has only existed for 10 years. There are Chinese business leaders in almost every country of the world, and it's obviously hoped that they will work through the BRI in their communities to take advantage of trade with their ancestral country. But the BRI isn't just trade. If you don't believe me, take a look at the World Bank's report. The BRI reduces transportation times, increases trade along economic corridors, lifts income in the regions, and has the potential to lift millions more out of poverty. If there was ever a good reason to invest and seek a return on your investment, there it is. Reduce costs, increase profits, and people lifted out of poverty. It isn't China that promotes these things as possibilities. This information comes from the World Bank, and I've linked it. They predict them as realities. China's marketplace in the ASEAN region, its links throughout the world with the BRI, and the recent signing of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP. They have amazing results, not just for China, but the RCEP has 15 member countries, half the world's population, and about 90% of all goods are now traded tariff-free. In fact, this has been described by the World Economic Forum as the world's biggest trade deal, and that's probably correct. Until recently, the largest trade deal in the world was between USA, Mexico, and Canada at $24.3 trillion. The RCEP membership, which includes 10 members of ASEAN, has topped off with $25.8 trillion and rising. The EU, by comparison, is $18.8 trillion and wouldn't go above RCEP even if the UK came back. India has yet to sign RCEP. It can opt in at any time. As with China, being a nuclear country, it can't be a member of ASEAN. So unless it joins RCEP, it's likely to miss out on the benefits and, according to some experts, will drive investment away from India and the USA into China and other RCEP members. There's one final reason why China would like to encourage investments by Chinese people, and that is to help offset the smear campaigns of the West. China is not the authoritarian, lawless place ruled by a dictatorship that they allege. If it was, it would have collapsed long ago. It clearly isn't. It couldn't have survived and grown in the way that it has. It's attracted more foreign investment than any other country in the world. And investors don't put their money where they think it might be unsafe. They look for stability and rule of law. They look for places where there's a return on their investment and a good profit to be made. And they keep coming back to China. Many Chinese diaspora have sought to return to China and record numbers of U.S. citizens are renouncing and handing back their U.S. passports. One of the main reasons for this is the strict money laundering and tax laws that make it very difficult to invest in one country and live in another. But there's also a huge anti-China campaign going on right now, and that could even lead to a war. Many Chinese people will be looking carefully at their options. If they're citizens of a country which has decided to seize Russian assets. Thousands of Russians in the USA, the UK, and the European Union had their assets frozen or seized because they're linked to Russia. This all happened without any court orders or legal process. It happened because governments can impose sanction, and they did. The way the US is poking and prodding China over several different issues it's not difficult to assume the same thing could happen to large investors of Chinese heritage, as happened to Russian oligarchs. The safest place for Chinese investors' money is going to be in China. A further benefit to this will be that those Chinese investors with overseas family, friends and business partners will be able to see the real China and spread the word to them that they are being misled that everything they're reading about China is wrong, and that if they really want a good return, they should join them and invest in a place where their money is stable, secure, growing, and protected by laws designed to protect everyone, not just the wealthy elite. 
I didn't want this to sound like an infomercial, but I guess it does. And the fact is, if I had money to invest, it's China I'd be investing in. Once again, thank you for watching Jerry's Take on China, and please don't forget to like, and please, please share this. See you next time.